Hey everyone, good evening. Uh, this is Carlos over here, CEO of GAR Capital. Thank you for joining me this evening. It's 6.31 p.m. Sunday, December 18th. It's time for our weekly preview and summary report for the Forex markets with the week ahead. As you know, we had the Federal Reserve decision last Wednesday that just passed and we had a 25 basis point hike, uh, which set off the rally in the dollar, which as we expected, but we had to play both ways, uh, which helped out in our favor was the fact that the Federal Reserve was talking about a three more rate hikes for 2017, which is a very bullish uh, statement for the dollar and the U.S. economy all around as the Trump rally continues in the markets, as the Dow Jones continues to chug along to the 20,000 mark. I just want to go over exactly how we did last week. We usually don't do this, but I want to go ahead and everyone anyways uh, we do have a couple of pairs of trades open we had one two three four six seven i think we made about 800 pips in profit last week which was an amazing job to everybody uh, great 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 job everyone we stayed prepared we knew our targets we got out at the right time we did it to perfection very very proud of all our traders very proud of our clientele that uh we stuck with our analysis and we it paid off at the end of the day, guys, patience always pays off. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at Forex Factory for our week ahead. Okay, so today, not much going on. In about 30 minutes, we have New Zealand uh, business confidence. Not really worried about that. What I am worried about tomorrow is the Bank of Japan policy rate information. Are we going to get a uh, monetary statement? Exactly what are we expecting? I'm going to go ahead and read a little bit from the Onada, Oanda Market Pulse. The USD is higher across the board after the Fed finally introduced, announced its much-awaited free hike with 25 basis points. Uh, we was definitely hawkish uh, Janet Yellen. Uh, we, have, we had a strong dollar rally due to the uh, conditions of maybe possible three-rate hikes and improved forecasts across the globe. The Bank of Japan will release its monetary policy tomorrow, um, excuse me, Tuesday, December 20th. Uh, is it tomorrow? Yeah, 20th, which would be their uh, local time, Japan time. We're on the 19th, the 19th of, keep an eye, uh, December 19th, excuse me, Monday. Uh, week in and hawkish U.S. growth expectation has given the BOJ room to hold and improve its econo economic assessment. Uh, the Japanese definitely want a weaker yen for export purposes. So definitely does the BOJ uh, a good service to get the yen to weaken, to, to rally from its low point. Uh, we had hit a low point of about 99 uh, USD JPY from the high of 124. So big swings across the board in 2016. As a very, 2016 has shown to be a very volatile year in the Japanese and dollar markets. Uh, the BOE and the Swiss National Bank have both kept their monetary policies unchanged after the Fed and is now up to the Bank of Japan to close the year for major central banks. This will be the long. This will be the final central bank announcement uh, for the year 2016. Uh, my expectation is that we should get a little more stimulus, but not a rate change or a cut to the downside as the dollar yen is still rounding to the upside. We're going to go ahead and look at a chart here in a bit, but that's my assessment, and we're going to go ahead and keep a couple of pendings while we have that information. We also have monetary minutes, excuse me, uh, policy meetings uh, for the Aussie. Uh, Australian dollar, Royal Bank of Australia. Uh, Tuesday, again, we still have the BOJ. Nothing else uh, to really look forward to on Tuesday. Uh, Wednesday, we have crude oil inventories and we have GDP from New Zealand. Guys, from now on, we're in the end of the year, near Christmas time. Expect lower volumes, expect uh, not much movement, maybe a little more scalping here and there, but we have our targets. We know where we're going to go. Uh, and we're going to go ahead and go over exactly what we need to go over. Uh, Canadian dollar, we actually have uh, core CPI and core retail sales for the Canadians. We also have final GDP on Thursday. That's a big number. We want to see exactly where we are, final GDP, and we're going to go ahead and, and check if we have any kind of revisions for last quarter. This is quarter on quarter growth. And then on Friday, we end up with the Canadian dollar GDP, and we have a current account of the British uh, uh, Great Britain. And that'll be the final trading. Uh, days before Christmas and we'll go ahead and see what we got to get going. So the big elephant in the room is definitely the BOJ uh, and 
uh, what we're going to play against it, we have a couple of pairs open. We have Raw again. Again, this guy, guys, this has been the big winner for the past couple of weeks. Let's go ahead and take a look at the daily. As you can see here, just since election day, rallied about from 101 to 117 plus. And you can see exactly little breaks here and there. We've written that a while. Definitely have been bullish all across the board. When does it stop? Where's the ceiling? Well, our target is right over here at 120. 120 has been always been the uh, exact little target that we've had since the beginning of the year. And right when it hit 120, that's when we started hitting downhill. Right around 121, 121, 29 is the uh, resistance mark on the daily. Are we are we gonna hit that uh, within the next couple of weeks? I don't believe so. I don't think I think with the BOJ we should be able to hit around 119, but 120 we definitely want to sell at this point. And see if we can get a cool off and maybe sell to the downside. Uh, as I think the dollar will cool off a bit as it will enter overbought territory um, as everything goes along. Also, the Canadian dollar has been strong across the board with oil. I'm going to go ahead and show the comparison with US oil. And this is on a daily chart. You've seen the correlation on the daily chart. This is crude oil right here. Up about seven percent in comparison to 453 the correlation is there for the taking now if we extend this into a weekly definitely oil has been taking a hit but as we get a little closer here let's go and line it up on the weekly chart you can see as it correlates with the Canadian dollar and the US oil markets uh, we do believe that US oil will gain strength as cutbacks in OPEC continues, as everyone agrees on that, and this is on a weekly chart. 60 seems to be the top off point on the weekly and on the daily chart. 60 is not on the board, on the weekly it is. So 50, on the daily, we have hit quite resistance here, a little bit of resistance at 52.42, but my long-term target, I didn't think that OPEC would cut, but it'll be $60 a barrel. You can see we still have that target mark here. And if we compare it to CAD again, oh, let me go and compare. This doesn't come up correctly. Bear with me, guys. Compare. Let's go ahead and add. Still bouncing back here, as you can see, still on the rise. So let's go back to the CAD again charts. This is the end of the comparison. On the weekly chart, we still have a little more to go. 90 seems to be the target to hit, with 92 would be the second on the weekly. Again, that's a longer swing trade. But on the daily, looks like we've hit short-term resistance at 88.37. I mean, excuse me, long-term resistance. But 90 seems is my target here. I think with oil rallying as well, the only thing that may hold this back, this rally back on oil, will be the stronger dollar. But oil and dollar have been rising together, which is quite curious. We're going to go ahead and take a look at that. So we're going to take a look at the dollar currency index at 102.79. We'll compare that to US oil. We can see exactly what I'm seeing on the daily chart. Or let's go look at it at a four hour chart. Trying to keep it short term. This is since December on a four hour chart. See a little bit of a bounce here and now we're kind of nearing exact same mark. We put on the hourly chart. US oil a little bit down against it, but if we want to really get an idea, we're going to go back to a daily chart since the rally in November. Dollar and oil rising together since the break here in the election day. Oil and dollar rising together. So a couple of charts I wanted to go ahead and look at. Pound dollar. We'll take a look at an hourly Charts. Hourly chart still shows a bearish mark as the dollar strengthens across the board. But dollar, the pound has regained a little bit of strength. It's been a resilient one since Brexit, this month uh, anyway. Uh, target would be here on an hourly, let me see, on a daily. 
Still a little bit of break here. Still a little bit of downside to go. Definitely lower highs as we started to get some momentum, but then drop back down. 121.50, 121.75 would be the point of return to support. We look back in a four hour chart, how long would that take us to get there? 122. Yep. Definitely seeing to the downside, guys. You're seeing it here with me. Then seeing lower lows and lower highs. If we get back to 125.50, I would short. That would probably be the short term ceiling. But we want to go ahead and hit exactly the point of rally. So I would say a break of 124 to be safe would be a good rallying point. But I wouldn't short that at the moment. 124, if I can break 124, that'd be a good short for the target of 121.75. This is not a pending, this is something we're looking at. So short at 124. Target of 121.75. Okay, we do have some uh, British uh, news as the current account may put us there. May, may get us closer to that end, but right now I don't want to touch it. Uh, Euro has been sinking big time. Euro dollar. So you can see here, we think we broke we broke 104. Actually broke 104, which has been the lowest, I believe, in the monthly chart. Oh boy. Lowest mark since 2003. So if you could see on a monthly chart, it's definitely to the downside. Let's check the daily chart. Looks like we've hit resistance. Excuse me, hit support here at 104.48. When is the reversal? If you do expect a reversal, where would it come back? The reversal for me, again, I don't want to call any kind of any kind of bottom. But if there's a reversal, it'll be 105.31 right below this candle, 105.36. So 105.35, and our target would be back to 10, to this point, 107.75. On Euro strength and reversal. But we have the dollar GDP, I mean, excuse me, US GDP on Friday. So I don't, ex I do expect it to beat it. Uh, but everything right now is based on yen. These are just a couple of charts that we are looking at. These are the, the reversal calls I would have. If we want to get back into uh, Euro dollar on the downside, the squeeze would be at 103.50. To parity. Parity target. As long as GDP hits and beats expectations with revisions. I think that we would get definitely to the downside to 1.00, which would be parity. This would be the targets what to watch for. And also, dollar yen, we'll make sure that we look at what would be the point of return to a pullback. So if we get a pullback to 116, let's see here, I don't need now, let's not look at it now. Question is this, let's see if 117. Definitely 117 to the target 115. If BOJ news affects 117 short target of 115 with stop loss of 118. If we get reversal. If not, we are still long. Still long. We're still on you dollar yen with our target of one twenty.
20. So again, guys, we may keep a pending, pending here, any kind of move for tomorrow. So this is the only one I would feel comfortable on uh, pending or maybe put a limit order would be dollar yen, a 117 short, which would close out our current position for a small loss, but then we would ride the wave down on a reversal and we'd go from there. But these are the, exactly what I'm looking for this week. Remember, low volume. Low volume due to holidays. Keep proper position size always. Always. Remember, one to four percent. Adjust stop losses as always. Accordingly. And stay on the chat, on the chat, and keep notifications on. Any questions, please feel free to message or email. All right, guys, this is exactly what we're watching for. We'll leave it at that. Tomorrow's the BOJ. I will have my information up as always. If you guys have any questions, feel free to message me as always. So we'll go and leave it at that. Hope everyone has a great evening. Thank you for spending time with me this evening. And uh, let's go ahead and continue killing the market as we had a great week last week. Let's see if we can continue. Don't force a trade. If it's not there, don't put it in there. If we're having two positions. We should, be, we should be fine either way. Make sure to keep in mind these limits. All right, guys, have a great day, great evening, and we'll catch you tomorrow. Thanks.